Okay, in our previous video, we worked through the operating section of Turner Inc.'s statement of cash flows. And again, you can find the, the templates, you can find the problem right beneath this problem, uh, right beneath this video, I should say. In this video, we're going to work through the direct method. So as I flip over to my Excel, you can see I've completed the direct method. Uh, we did that in the previous video and explained all the computations. In this one, we're going to do an indirect method. I just want to caution you again. My template is, is good as a sort of trial run or working through a statement of cash flow, but it isn't great in that no company would ever do the direct and indirect methods side by side. They would just choose one or the other. Um, and, and so, again, I just want to caution you about using this, that you, you wouldn't ever want to do both. You just want to do one or the other. I just want to teach you how to do both. So I, I figured I'd do both side by side, and then we'd be able to make a bit of a comparison. So the indirect method, I like a lot less than the direct method. The direct method, I feel like it explains well where our cash comes from and where we spend it when it comes to operating activities. The indirect method of summarizing our operating activities says, well, net income is kind of like the summary of our cash in and our cash out. It's the summary of revenues and expenses. So why don't we just start there and work backwards? And what you find with net income is it's a lot of backward steps. And, and that's, to me, a bit confusing. Um, so let's have a look and, and we'll start with net income as, as any indirect method uh, uh, section will start with. And so our company's net income was $10,000. So I'll start there. Our amortization expense gets added back. And I want to explain, actually, these next four items on my list, let me highlight them a different color, these four items are all, it's kind of like backwards day. Amortization expense, when I see amortization expense, I want to minus it, because expenses you subtract from revenues. So I would think minus it. If I have a gain, I would think, oh, add it. Well, in these ones, we're going to do the exact opposite of what you think to do. So amortization expense, we're going to add. If we have a gain, we subtract it. If we have a loss, we add it. If we have a gain on sale of investment, same thing. We subtract the gain. We add back a loss. Impairment losses, well, it says loss. I would think minus a loss. No, no, no. You add it back. This is like the opposite section. I'll explain why, but, but for now, just know that gains you're going to minus here. Losses you're going to add back and amortization expense you know you think it's an expense it's a minus no 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 you add it back let me explain why so what what the indirect method is saying is this number net income ten thousand dollars this is a fair representation of our cash flow from operations and it's not a bad estimate but it's not perfect and one of the things we said in the last video and i'll repeat here is that amortization this two thousand dollars amortization or depreciation expense is not a cash expense. So what we've got to say is, okay, when we calculated net income of $10,000, uh, that was great. We took out amortization. I minus $2,000 to get to, to this $10,000. And what we're saying now is, well, yeah, it's fine if we, if we want to say net income is, is a reasonable uh, uh, measure of cash flow, but we know that this $2,000 had no impact on the cash flow. So if I minused it, I did that in error. It, it shouldn't affect the cash flow. So what we do is we add back the $2,000. We're saying, oh, we shouldn't take out the $2,000 if we're looking for cash flow. We're going to add it back now because it, it, it shouldn't have been taken out in the first place. So that's why these four are kind of opposite. So again, we add back our amortization. I won't put that in a negative. Gain or loss on sale of uh Assets. Let's see, we, we lost on a sale of equipment, so loss I would think minus. No, we're going to add it back. The reason to, to do the opposite here is not because we didn't make money on the sale of the asset or not because we didn't uh, have cash flowing. The reason we do this now is because any sales of assets or investments are tracked not in the operating section. They should be tracked in the investing section. So in investing, when we sell equipment, we're going to have a line here about cash received on the sale of equipment. So anything to do with the sale of assets doesn't belong in the operating section. So that's why we back it out. This company didn't have any investments or impairment losses, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, they didn't have prepaid rent, but they did have taxes payable. Let's have a look at our taxes payable. 
uh, our taxes payable went from 1,200 to 1,000. They went down by 100 or 200. And you've got to say to yourself, why did taxes payable go down? Why did it go from 1,200 to 1,000? It went down by 200. Why was that? Well, taxes payable goes down because you pay your taxes. So that $200 that it went down is bad for your cash. I mean, it might be good for your standing with the government to pay your taxes, but it's bad for your pocketbook. You, you cost yourself $200. So this is a negative $200 impact on cash. Uh, wages payable, we don't have it. Uh, accounts receivable, we have though. Accounts receivable was 13000 last year, 11000 this year. Why would accounts receivable go down? The reason it goes down is you collected the money. So the fact that AR went down is good for our money. We add $2,000. Change in inventory. Let's see. We did have inventory. Our inventory went up by 400. Why would inventory go up by 400? Because we bought more inventory. So that's bad for your money. Right? If you have more inventory, it means you have more money tied up in your inventory. It's bad for cash. Prepaid insurance, we didn't have. Office supplies, we didn't have. Uh, accounts payable, we for sure had. Accounts payable was 4,000 last year, 5,800 this year. Our payable went up. You might think, that's bad. I owe more people more money. It's bad because you owe people more money, but it's good for your cash because it means you're keeping it in your pocket. Walmart and big companies will try to stretch their payables. They don't want to pay their payables on time. They want to have them stretch as long as possible. Why do they do that? They want to keep the money in their pocket as long as they can. So the fact that we have more payables than we had last year means we're keeping more money in our pocket. If we had fewer payables, it means we're paying pay, uh, our, our liabilities off. So that 1800 is actually a plus to our cash flow. Fit asset liability, uh, we're not going to worry about it. if fit stands for future income taxes. Our American cousins will call that deferred income taxes. Um, but just know that if it changes, it, it could affect our, our cash flow statement. And in terms of other, there is no other in, in this problem. But that's just a catch-all in case there was some other accrued liability that I missed. Uh, let's sum up our list. Actually, let me do it this way. I'm going to equal that plus that plus that plus that. Ooh, ooh. Plus that plus that plus that. And what we find, this is great news, is that we did it the direct method on the left, 16,200 inflow. We did it the indirect method on the right, and we got the same inflow. And that has to be the case. Now, it's a nice double check for us to do right now, but in reality, you're only going to do one way or the other. You'd never do both. You wouldn't care about having this little double check at the top, but it's nice to know that we got the same answer uh, both ways. So our overall inflow here is 16,200, and this is an inflow from operating activities. Now, from here on, the investing and the financing section are the same, no matter which method you choose. And again, you're just going to choose one or the other. Let me just zoom back out a little bit further and give us a bit of a bird's eye view on the direct and indirect methods. They both get us the same place, but in my mind when I read it as a user, I get so much more information out of the direct method than I do out of the indirect. The indirect, I feel like I start with net income and I work backwards and it's these awkwards adding back uh, costs, deducting back revenues and tracking changes in assets and liabilities. With a direct method, I just feel like, oh, here's where my cash came from and there's where it went. I, I feel like it's a more logical uh, method. But that said, most companies do use this indirect method, so it's, it's definitely worth learning. Um, the final thing I'll leave you with is a little trick for the indirect method. And the trick is this. If I have an asset that goes up, then, uh, sorry, I shouldn't have put that in there. Ah, uh, if I have an asset that goes up, then cash goes down. So if I have an asset going up, cash goes down. This is for all those change in taxes payable, change in accounts receivable. If I have an asset going, uh, pardon me, down, cash goes up. If I have a liability going up, cash goes up. If I have a liability going down, cash goes down. And if I have a shareholder's equity account going up, cash goes up. And if I have a shareholder's equity account going down, 
cash goes down. And that rule holds. So whenever you're doing those change ins, they should be easy. You should be able to logic your way through them. But if you can't, just remember this template. In fact, you only really need to remember these two lines and then you know know that the opposite is true and liabilities and shareholders equity work the same way so you just remember liabilities and go okay shareholders equity that's the same um, but if an asset goes up cash goes down let's test that let's look at our accounts receivable accounts receivable went down so accounts receivable is an asset it went down therefore cash goes up and sure enough when accounts receivable went down cash went up by two grand Let's look at another one. Let's look at our uh, inventory. Inventory went up by 400. We said if an asset goes up, cash goes down. So it's an asset going up, cash goes down. And yes, indeed, our cash went down by 400 as a result of that change in inventory. Now, what you'll find is this just works. If you look at this kind of chart on the side, it's I, I think will be useful to you. And this stuff, it, it does work. You should be able to logically infer why it's happening. But if, if you're not able to do that just follow this chart it, it absolutely will get you uh, where you need to go all right that's all for this part of the video we've still got two big sections yet to do we've got to do our investing section and that'll be the next video and a final video on the financing section and that'll be all